Hello boys and girls. Hello Forel. How are you? I hope you are keeping well and busy doing lots of Easter activities as well as lots of reading. Now, do you remember our reading week? We looked at books by Roald Dahl and we really, really enjoyed them. So I'm going to read you one of them today called Easy or Trot. Okay, listen carefully. Mr Hoppy lived in a small flat high up in a tall concrete building. He lived alone. He had always been a lonely man and now that he was retired from work he was more lonely than ever. There were two loves in Mr Hoppy's life. One was the flowers he grew on his balcony. They grew in pots and tubs and baskets and in summer the little balcony became a riot of colour. Mr Hoppy's second love was a secret he kept entirely to himself. The balcony immediately below Mr Hoppy's jutted out a good bit further from the building than his own. So Mr Hoppy always had a fine view of what was going on down there. This balcony belonged to an attractive middle-aged lady called Mrs Silver. Mrs Silver was a widow who also lived alone. And although she didn't know it, it was she who was the object of Mr Hoppy's secret love. He had loved her from his balcony for many years, but he was a very shy man and he had never been able to bring himself to give her even the smallest hint of his love. Every morning Mr Hoppy and Mrs Silver exchanged polite conversation, the one looking down from above, the other looking up, but that was as far as it ever went. The distance between their balconies might not have been more than a few yards, but to Mr Hoppy it seemed like a million miles. He longed to invite Mrs Silver up for a cup of tea and a biscuit, but every time he was about to form the words on his lips, his courage failed him. As I said, he was a very, very shy man. Oh, if only, he kept telling himself, if only he could do something tremendous like saving her life or rescuing her from a gang of armed thugs. If only he could perform some great feat that would make him a hero in her eyes. If only. The trouble with Mrs Silver was that she gave all her love to somebody else, and that somebody was a small tortoise called Alfie. Every day, when Mr Happy looked over his balcony and saw Mrs Silver whispering endearments to Alfie, and stroking his shell, he felt absurdly jealous. He wouldn't even have minded becoming a tortoise himself if it meant Mrs Silver stroking his shell each morning and whispering and demons to him. Alfie had been with Mrs Silver for years and he lived on her balcony summer and winter. Planks had been placed around the sides of the balcony so that Alfie could walk about without toppling over the edge and in one corner there was a little house into which Alfie would crawl every night to keep warm. When the colder weather came along in November Mrs Silver would fill Alfie's house with dry hay and the tortoise would crawl in there and bury himself deep under the hay and go to sleep for months on end without food or water. This is called hibernating. In early spring, when Alfie felt the warmer weather through his shell, he would wake up and crawl very slowly out of his house onto the balcony. And Mrs Silver would clap her hands with joy and cry out, Welcome back, my darling one. Oh, how I have missed you. It was at times like these that Mr Hoppy 
wished more than ever that he could change places with Alfie and become a tortoise. Now we come to a certain bright morning in May when something happened that changed and indeed electrified Mr Hoppy's life. He was leaning over his balcony rail watching Mrs Silver serving Alfie his breakfast. Here's the heart of the lettuce for you my lovely, she was saying. And here is a slice of fresh tomato and a piece of crispy celery. Good morning Mrs Silver. Mr Hoppy said. Alfie's looking well this morning. Isn't he gorgeous? Mrs Silver said, looking up and beaming at him. Absolutely gorgeous, Mr Hoppy said, not meaning it. And now, as he looked down at Mrs Silver's smiling face, gazing up into his own, he thought for the thousandth time how pretty she was, how sweet and gentle and full of kindness, and his heart ached with love. I do so wish he would grow a little faster, Mrs Silver was saying. Every spring when he wakes up from his winter sleep, I weigh him on the kitchen scales. And do you know that in all the eleven years I've had him, he's not gained more than three ounces. That's almost nothing. What does he weigh now? Mr Hoppy asked her. Just thirteen ounces, Mrs Silver answered. About as much as a grapefruit. Yes, well, tortoises are very slow growers, Mr Hoppy said solemnly but they can live for a hundred years. I know that, Mrs Silver said, but I do so wish he would grow just a little bit bigger. He's such a tiny wee fellow. He seems just fine as he is, Mr Hoppy said. No, he's not just fine, Mrs Silver cried. Try to think how miserable it must make him feel to be so titchy. Everyone wants to grow up. You really would love him to grow bigger, wouldn't you? Mr Hoppy said, and even as he said it, his mind suddenly went click and an amazing idea came rushing into his head. Of course I would, Mrs Silver cried. I'd give anything to make it happen. Why, I've seen pictures, pictures of giant tortoises that are so huge People can ride on their backs. If Alfie were to see those, he would turn green with envy. Okay. Now, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. You'll have to log in again tomorrow to see what happens next in the story. Thank you for listening and have a lovely day. See you soon.